Most of the musicians whose songs are going viral aren't even posting every day. Now, some of them had some pretty big platforms and a following already, so a lot of them don't need to post every day since their post reach is pretty effective compared to you. But in all honesty, every week on my members only feed, I dissect the artists who are blowing up right now. And yeah, they often have some sort of following. The algorithm knows what to do with them, but even the artists who are kind of going from nothing aren't posting every single day most of the time. They focus on good ideas and quality posts that align with the emotion of their song. And there's of course artists successfully posting more than this amount, doing stitches, replies, duets, and slides. And yes, for those of you wanting to be the next Addison Ray or Tube Girl, you should post three times a day. But if you're a musician trying to do this, three to seven times per week seems to honestly be what's working for a lot of people. House shows are such an underrated way to get the most passionate music fans interested in you. So much of fandom is like treasure hunt satisfaction to have found some underground artists before other people have. And when you see a bunch of people really going off in a small environment, it's an interesting psychological trick that makes you think, wow, I must be early to this. And for the people who pride themselves on being early to artists, this really is the gold because then they're gonna wanna tell a lot of people about you when they see all these people going off to you in a small environment. I've been seeing artists like Pluko in Jersey who exist in the dance genre really, really doing this to great growth as they show people going off to the their music at recent house shows. Doing a collab with artists smaller than you can still give you a ton of growth. A lot of you are stuck on the misconception that in order to have a successful collaboration, you have to work with an artist who has way more monthly listeners than you. However, the real deciding factor of growth here is one, how good is the song? since that's really gonna be what makes it spread. So if you see someone who's really talented and don't have as many monthly listeners as you that would go great on your track, that's actually the biggest thing you can do to make this collaboration work. Secondly, how well you promote it. If you have 4,000 monthly listeners and your collaborator has 2,000, that extra overlap of probably 1,500 fans that you don't share is gonna give you growth as well. And if both of the two of you are growing in the future, that's a huge deal and will keep you on their artist page and their fans will discover you and vice versa. Every collaboration you do is just an investment into another artist since if they get big, people will see you on their artist page and likely hear your song. This is what separates the great artists from the good artists. One thing that great artists do all the time is doing something simple that can make you a little bit different. I want to even touch on the Halloween costume theory that Coco Moco coined. And if you've heard of this concept before and you have no idea what to do, you should really look up my name in Lame's analysis since I explained a way to develop this. A great example of the Halloween costume theory is Echo 2K, who differentiates themselves from other artists by sort of seeing themselves as more of a higher brow than a lot of SoundCloud rappers out there. So doing things like lighting candles and playing classical music for his boiler room set is a small thing they do to give an edge to their uniqueness. But back to the Halloween costume theory. Having recognizable features to your look, to where someone could dress up as you for Halloween and have them be easily recognizable is really one of those things that can help make you grow much, much faster. Steal from artists outside your genre. The artists who do the best in general are the ones who also take from other genres and apply it to their own. No matter what genre you are, you can absolutely steal from great acts in other genres and make it your own since people find that really interesting. Many people listen to a wide range of music and are familiar with many genre tropes. So stealing an element like a unique vocal style that you really find cool in an outside genre and recontextualizing that in the context of your genre can be a great way to make fresh sounds and give yourself a unique character. And on this platform, I constantly see metal artists picking up something a country artist was doing or vice versa and it does huge numbers for them. To make something unique, all you need to do is combine an element that's not usually used in your genre that you're really influenced by that has emotional power to you and see what happens. People on this app are saying some really dumb things about editorial playlists. If you see people talking about passive listeners and playlists being passive listeners so you should ignore them and it's a horrible thing for your music, well, you're listening to someone who doesn't get it. Yes, when your song falls off an editorial playlist, your plays drop, but that was the same with any music discovery method throughout time. Whether that was radio stations playing a song, club DJs playing a track for a season, passive listening has always inherently been how you get a lot of people to convert to being fans of you. And it's not a bad thing. Numbers can fall as long as the overall tide is rising. But when I hear people trashing passive listening and saying, 
We gotta stop being on playlists. That shows you inherently don't get how people become music listeners and the inherent way that people discover music. Fun fact, we've never been in an era of music where you have to put in less hours to get heard by millions of people. And I said what I said. So many of you love to complain and act like we're in the most unfair era of music, which is the truth when we talk about your compensation. But it is not true that you have to put in more work than you ever have to get your song heard. This isn't to take away from how grueling the grind is making a living to support your music and the mental health issues we all have from this modern hellhole we're living in. But when it comes to the amount of hours and effort you need to put into promoting your music and making it, to potentially have 1 million people hear it and decide if they like it, it's never been lower. Just a decade ago, musicians had to go on radio tours from station to station if they ever wanted to have millions of people hear it. They were using physical mailing lists for show promotions and spent a ton of money and effort flyering their shows. I mean, Radiohead even made a movie about how awful this was years ago. And yes, they could often afford to outsource some of these things, but in all honesty, in the early days, they probably had to do it themselves just like you, and it took a lot more hours. Here's how a musician can save time writing comments to fans. I'm sure since you're an artist that wants a strong fan base, that you're replying to every comment on your content. Writing the same comment replies over and over again. It takes up time and effort that you'd rather be doing other things with, especially when you have tons of comments across a bunch of platforms every day. So using text replacement is a great way to streamline this process and has saved me a ton of time doing this. If you have an iPhone, you can set this up by going to preferences, general, keyboard, and then text replacement. Here you can create reply shortcuts for common comments by using symbols like colons or semicolons. For example, semicolon one can insert your most used comment or emoji and semicolon two could be the second most used one. You know what to do from there. These shortcuts also sync across Mac and iPhone. So once you set it up, you could be doing it from desktop or mobile. Releasing more music doesn't mean getting listened to. Striving for a large catalog is not the key to blow up or the formula to create fans. So many people you tell me this myth that you need a catalog of 30 songs in order to be one of the top artists on Spotify. This is a classic example of people getting confused with causation versus correlation. Increasing the number of tracks in an artist's discography does not directly cause the number of fans they have to increase. The two factors seem to be related since artists who blow up are putting out quality music and emotionally driven music every four to eight-ish weeks and promoting it to its potential. After years of releasing songs, of course, you'll see a plethora of songs in an artist's catalog. But if you release too quick, oftentimes right when your song's about to start growing, you're gonna start promoting another song and then it's gonna die. Trying to boil music down to a numbers game is not how I see artists blowing up when I study the artists who are blowing up every single week on my members only feed. It's not even true that all the artists in the Spotify top 100 have more than 33 or 35 songs. Artemis has less than that many individual songs in his profile right now. Musicians don't get their biggest problem is obscurity. Let me explain. This frustrates a lot of small artists since they often compare what works for big artists to their own music promotion. But the most detrimental issue is that no one even hears them to decide if they like them or not and musicians don't think about that when they just imitate the big artists that they love. And a lot of this work now is how you find your audience. Right now, short form video, if done right, can find you an audience like nothing else ever has. Try things like making videos, asking if your music is some obscure genre, like say uh, Digicore, or even ask what groups you sound like, since you'll often get comments, and then you'll end up in the feed of the people who commented again, and they'll hopefully hear your song repeatedly and like you. You also need to be engaging with other creators in your niche, collabing, replying to comments, stitching, duetting, and creating content for a target audience. But oftentimes, your low numbers can be rooted in the fact that your music hasn't found the right audience. Tell your story to get fans more invested in you and drive up your streams. I talk to so many of you who have amazing stories about where you came from, and none of your fans even know them. Making a five or 12 minute documentary style video that shows the depth of you as an artist can drive up streams and increase repeated listens as fans are more invested in the artists they relate to and then tell stories to their friends about them. I see this done with artists like Brockhampton, and now Internet Girl has one, and they get more engagement by making a simple documentary for their YouTube and then creating conversations around themselves. You know, everybody's so obsessed with this concept of world building now, and this is part of how you do that. Having a sense of humor about yourself is a green light to so many potential fans. In every genre, 
there's always some sort of conformity in tropes that people recognize to say you're a part of my thing. Being playful about cultural references or specific things to your niche is always a good thing to do since it says that you're part of the joke. But make no mistake, your music doesn't have to be even playful, it can be dead serious for you to still do this. Take Boy Genius or Phoebe Bridgers for example, their music is dead serious, yet no one is laughing more at themselves in music than them. And really, humor is one of those things where people share it. If you're actually funny but you want your music to be dead serious, I think you're losing out a lot of the time on what you could be doing to build a fan base. Musicians need to steal from comedians. As a music marketing nerd who stays on the forefront of what's happening, I work in a couple of other things. And as I've been working with some comedians, I see that what works to promote comedians and musicians are often the same. And there's something musicians though can learn from what really works for comedians. The number one thing that's building comedians fan bases is doing crowd work. When you play a live show as a musician, even if you have just eight people there, if you film it and figure out some sort of interaction where you have a fan tell a story while your guitarist has to tune his weird guitar or something like that, and it goes kind of wild, that could be a viral moment for you. And if you're really witty and know how to talk to crowds, this can really, really work to build your fan base. So instead of just counting to the next song, Maybe ask the audience a ridiculous question. Talk about a song's backstory and then introduce a chaotic moment where you can ask a fan if they think they know what happens next. This is also a great way to get people to come out to your live shows as they see that it's really fun. Use Easter egg lore to get fans talking about you. You may have noticed many of the artists who blow up repeatedly leave small Easter eggs for fans to find out that reoccur throughout their videos and other content they make. This gives people a conversation piece to tell their friends about and show them that they noticed something since they want to impress their friends. But this helps convert fans to your music as that friend points it out to numerous friends who show what they found and they're so proud of themselves and then these people who they're showing it to hear your music and become fans because they want to be part of the conversation. Putting Easter eggs or anything that creates curiosity makes people want to dig through your other videos and talk about it with their friends. And then they all collaborate on finding more lore if you give them the bait. 